this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about dental implants. Today's patient is a female. She has a lower bridge that had to be cut out and, and she lost a, an anterior abutment. So if we look at the CT scan with Nobel clinician, we can see that the, the ridge actually is getting fairly narrow here. This was right after she had the tooth taken out, so you can see in this part in the anterior area that the, uh, the ridge is actually quite a bit missing. If we look at the nerve in this case, we can see that the there is an anterior segment, the incisive nerve. If we move back, we can kind of see it down here. If we move back a little bit, we can see where the mental foramen is, and this allows us to know where we want to place the implant. So if we were doing a, an anterior implant, we'd have to be careful of that incisive nerve. It's a very kind of unusual and big nerve. So over the mental frame, and we're going to place this implant, we can see at this time that there was uh, some destruction of the ridge. So we're going to open up the ridge and flap it and have a look at this area to make sure that it's healed quite nicely. And then we're going to take some x-rays to confirm and check and make sure that everything is fine before we place the implant. What you notice on the CT scan is that once we place this implant, we can see that there's going to be enough space for the abutment, but we uh, have a very tight kind of place. This is a five millimeter high healing abutment. So we can say, see that we have a little bit of space above this. We want to have a minimum of five. I'd like to have eight to nine millimeters to have an ideal space, but also this enables us to get a good emergence profile if we can go a little bit deeper. If we look at the nerve, we can see we're three millimeters above the nerve, even though we are looking like we're close. It's just kind of in two planes of uh, space here. So once the implant is being placed, it's going to look like it's close to the nerve, even though it's not in the same plane. So we do a, a ridge flap and open it up and have a look, and the bones actually heal quite nicely in this case. So this is a, a good start to a good case. Now since I'm going to splint these implants together, I used the clinician software to pick an implant. And I picked the Nobel Replace CC in this case. Because of the uniform low pitch thread, this will put not very much pressure on the ridge. Then I can also do a splinting job by having a flat platform on top of the implant for splinting together. And with the 45 degree bevel, I can still have a soft tissue kind of seal around the top of the implant even though I'm splinting. So this is a great design. If I chose to do singles, I can actually use a platform shift on both of the implants and make this uh, either a cement retained bridge or singles. In this case, we're using a lab fabricated uh, guide. And this is just to mark the ridge for where we're going to place the implants. I actually will use a precision drill and feel the lingual and feel the buckle and kind of split the distance once I've marked it a little bit then just go in a few millimeters, making sure that I'm keeping the back of the uh, handpiece pointed towards the lingual cusp of the upper teeth to keep this in a screw retained position. I'll use a two millimeter twist drill just to go into about eight millimeters so I can do some calibration of this ridge because it's been healing since the CT scan. And so we're gonna go through the RP protocol, which is drill one, two, and three. So the first drill in is the two millimeter twist drill, and we will take this down to about eight. And I'll place some direction indicators so I can take an x-ray. And as they say in, uh, in the world, measure twice, cut once. So we're gonna measure again and make sure everything is good. But I'm liking the position of these two indicators for the angulation. I think it's great, and we're gonna find out about the depth right now. To determine depth again, what I'll do is take the uh, x-ray of the indicators using a digital x-ray I can calibrate the x-ray because I know this is eight millimeters so once I type this in this will enable me to know that everything on the x-ray is now calibrated to that particular eight millimeters so I can measure down to the nerve and know that it's 13.2 millimeters in this case and I can also see in the other side that measuring down to where the nerve is that it's about 12.5 so I have to be a little bit more careful in this particular position but we should have lots of space because we're not actually in the same plane as well. So it'll look tight, but it's not going to be in the same plane of uh, 3D effect. 
Just to go over the protocol one more time, we're going to use a 2 mm twist drill first. Then number two, we're going to use a 3.5 mm wide by 10 mm long taper drill. And then we'll follow the, the last drill will be a 4.3 by 10 mm long taper drill. It's important to note that the tapered drills are actually 1.5 millimeters longer than the stated implant length. So th this is important to notice. So you can see here that the 10 millimeter long 3.5 drill is actually 11.5 millimeters long. So we'll take this first drill in. We'll prepare down to where we want to be. So we're actually a little closer than 10 millimeters to the nerve. We know we have about 13 millimeters here. So I've made the osteotomies 3.5 millimeters wide. You can see right away that we still have some good bone on the buccal and lingual of these implants. So we'll go to the 4.3 by 10 millimeter long implant drill. It's a tapered drill and this is actually again 11.5 millimeters long. I'm using this drill at 800 RPM or less and uh, preparing the osteotomy. So we get the 4.3 millimeter wide and then we can open up the implant. So you can see here the implant is a uh, kind of a platform shifted with a 45 degree angle on top of it with a conical connection and, and an internal hex. We won't be using the internal hex on the bridge but uh, we can sure use it to kind of carry this implant to the mouth. So we use a conical connection driver and it kind of stays on here really nicely. It grabs in quite nice because the, of the hex and the conical connection. We can carry it to the mouth. I have used a long driver here just in order to easily get around the two adjacent teeth and the patient has good at opening so it makes it a little easier for me to to get this implant in the right position. During this procedure I want to keep the back of the head of the drill towards the lingual cusp just so I can keep this in screw retained position. So you can see I can't get the implant down. It's not seated at 45 newtons so I'm going to have to take this implant out and prepare the osteotomy a little bit more and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to just detorque this. So re reverse my torque wrench and take the implant out a little bit and then I'll use the driver to take this implant out, put it back in the case and then I'm going to use a screw tap to fix the situation. So by putting the implant drill in reverse I'm able to reverse the implant out take it out of the mouth and I keep it sterile by putting it back into the case. So I'll go to the screw tap and try to tap this osteotomy at about 45 newtons. So we turn it right down. So you can see this tap is lower in the kit but we don't want to use this on a high RPM because it's designed to go very slow and to kind of prepare the osteotomy in a thread pattern. And We're doing this because the cortical bone is quite dense in this area. So we can't use a dense bone drill because it's not recommended on a shorter implant like this. But we need to use something to make it so that we can seat this implant. And you'll still see I don't get it completely down because the cortical bone is on either side of this implant. So it's kind of squeezing in the ridge. So the posterior implant goes in quite nicely right down to the ridge height. But we're going to have to still put a little extra torque on this implant. So I'm cheating a little bit, but you get a feel for how much torque you can place on this implant. And we put this down a little bit further. I've chosen to do a staged healing approach. So I'm using a platform shifted type of healing abutment. And I'll place these in on purpose so that I'm able to get the soft tissues to heal around the top of the implant as much as possible during this first healing phase. And then I'll switch off to the bridge healing abutments later on which are non-platform shifted. So here I'm checking the space. You can see it's very similar to what the concept was when I started with the planning that I've got these down so that they're in a good spot so I have the prosthetic space to restore the implants. They're in a screw retained position. I'm using a gut suture to close the area and then we're going to be finished. So then we'll let these heal for about three months. You can see I have it sutured around the top of the implants and we can see the platform shift is going to allow it to heal. Now notice that it looks like it's very close to the nerve but it's actually superimposed. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Be sure to subscribe so you can get the newest updates sent right to your email.